Today we'll be messing with the greatest power known to modding. The godlike power of the void. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time we hit a very important milestone and made our first permanent manufacturing facility. And now have the capacity to produce 84 heavy modular frames per minute. Meaning that project is done. Well, on the production side anyway. On the input side though, we're struggling quite a bit. And the concrete's having a very difficult time keeping up. But once we have trains, that issue will be well and gone. Because after that point, we'll be able to take over the rest of the world. And we're getting extremely close to that goal as well. Because now that we have the heavy modular frames made, and steel production being handled, the last big thing we really need for trains is... for you to leave a like. Okay, okay, but what we actually need are computers. Because they're used in the making of electronic locomotives, the free platforms, and the train stations. But the problem with computers is... they take oil. No matter how you slice it, no matter how you dice it, they take oil. They need the circuit boards, and the circuit boards will use rubber. We're gonna go with alternate recipe number two, which uses 16 rubber and 24 wire, because it seems to be the most convenient. And then for computers, we're using alternate recipe two. So we use the crystal oscillators and the circuit boards to make one computer in an assembler. And then once we have both of those, we hit the rails and industrialize the world. So Mio, Tuo, are you ready to deal with some oil memes? Oh boy. Actually, you guys probably don't even know about them. But long ago, in a distant world, I built another mega factory. And that other mega factory took lots and lots of oil. In fact, we drained the entire world of it. And that's likely to happen again. And also, the machines required to process oil are super massive. Making this a very, very inconvenient project. So we're just gonna have the best of times. But you know, maybe if we got a purple power slug, maybe this wouldn't be such the big ordeal. I'd be really happy if we got a purple power slug, guys. But of course, it doesn't look like we got one. No? No. Well, at the very least, at least we didn't get nuclear waste. Right? Right. Oh, and speaking of nuclear waste, uh, we're kind of building up on that and you guys were giving me quite a few good suggestions for what to do with it. Mean one being is that we just sent it off to the void. But we'll address that in a bit. First off is oil. Luckily for us though, oil isn't actually the biggest deal in our Let's Play here because we have chose the best starting location in the world. And guess what? All of the oil we're gonna need for a long time is just in this area here. It's somewhere around 4,000 units of oil per minute is just in this little coastal area, which is right in front of us. So although that part will be simple, the building part of things will not be. So we're gonna have to come up with a pretty creative solution for that. However, there is some more good news here, and that is that we have tons of space and in this world, we're not actually building all of the production at our base, but we're building it throughout the world. So, with all of the oil nodes out in this area, what I plan to do is make oil rigs for every single one. Because each oil node, let's say this one for example, uh, it will produce 300 oil per minute, and every oil refinery, these guys, uses 30 oil per minute to make the 30 rubber. So the production ratios are extremely clean, and for the most part, we're gonna be using the oil only to make rubber. So like if we're just looking at the raw numbers here, nothing's that difficult. No crazy mass shenanigans. Just super massive building shenanigans. Okay, but I spent an entire in-game night, and I think we have our repeatable pattern for these oil platforms. And they're gonna be huge. They're gonna look Kind of like pegs, because they're gonna be horrifically tall. But we will kind of resemble an oil rig. Kind of, maybe, just a little bit. But yeah, 
Uh, generally speaking, there's a little mini floor in here for a little bit of load balancing. Essentially, we're bringing everything up to here to this first splitter. No! As I was saying, we have a little bit of load balancing going on here. And because the oil node beneath us is normal, we can get 300 oil per minute out of it using an oil pump. So that equates to about 10 oil refineries. So I split up everything into five, almost equally. So splitting things into five is a bit of a mess, unless you want to be lazy about it like, like I am right now. And what we're doing is first everything goes through one splitter and half of all of the oil from the entire node goes to the first two refineries, which are literally right above us. And that just makes it so these first two back up extremely quick, and the rest of the refineries in the entire oil platform will work out perfectly fine. Kind of little bit with a few hiccups. Generally speaking, fine. Because once we have that bit split off, we have these guys split into four. So one line over there, and then the one splitter goes into two splitters, and those four lines go up to other floors. And that is pretty much everything. Like I said, it's not so much a difficult project, it's just a big freaking project. It's gonna look really cool at the end though. We have a little staircase or a conveyor pole ladder that'll be going up the middle, which is what we'll be traveling on for when we need to do maintenance or something. Just a little bit of realism. This side's gonna have a ton of conveyor lifts going up it. And this whole thing is just gonna go way up into the sky, like... Yeah, maybe as tall as that mountain there? Like, these are gonna be some hefty boys. Hefty, hefty boys. Ooh! And the best thing, best thing of all, is it's gonna look super cool once we add in... Walkways! All the way around. Because really, that's how you get that oil well look. You just have a bunch of rickety looking scaffolding all around the entire thing so that you just pass the most basic safety inspections. And yeah, honestly, that already looks pretty good. Like if we just left it as is, I would be fine with it. So too bad we have to make so many more of the refineries. But oh boy, because we're playing modded satisfactory, building isn't even gonna be that big of an issue. Because now that I've added in a few little extra decorations, we can go ahead and copy and paste it. So we just mark off the area, Set the top to here, set the bottom to the floor underneath all of the refineries, and now I think all we need to do is fill the design five times vertically, so in the z-axis. So we just do five there, preview, everything just works. I think it just did. One, two, three, four, five. Wow! Everything just did. And yeah, that's a pretty tall freaking oil rig, brother! In fact, it's about at my estimate as being as tall as that cliff there. Oh, just barely isn't as tall though. Just barely. That's okay. This is all good. We are ready to say okay. Takes all the items from like bins around the world. And that's that. And I just quickly added in some more support pillars because oh my gosh, this thing is insane. And yeah, that's now that. Definitely doesn't look like an oil rig anymore. Like maybe if it was two layers it would, but this many layers? It's kind of just a random skyscraper in the water. Eh, I'm okay with that though. Still looks cool. And it'll look even better once I add in all of the belts and the power. Oh, and by the way, with the belts, uh, the input belts are going up this way and the output belts will be over here. Now I don't know exactly what we'll do with them, but we'll figure that out later. Because that kind of problem solving always works out well, right? Okay, no, no, no. I actually already have kind of a solution in mind. Pretty much we're going to be copying what we do with our other World Eater projects, where every floor of output is merged with the next floor, and so on and so forth until there's one main line where all the output goes out on. Because at the end of the day, the oil rigs are only going to produce 300 oil per minute, which is 300 rubber per minute, which can easily fit on one belt. Therefore, if we just move down and combine all of them, nothing will overflow. So we're all good. Okay, but now the belt work is all done, and you know what? I have to say, this whole project is pretty easy. 
Because all in, there's only 11 machines, so the belt works pretty easy. We can copy and paste stuff, so building's easy. The whole design looks pretty sweet. Like, I, man, I had it, I just had it in my head. This is gonna be such an ordeal because of our experience in our first playthrough. However, I do have to copy this design for the dozen or so more oil nodes that are left in the area. But even still, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. In fact, I think we're just gonna boop it. And that's a job well done. All of our oil refineries are good to go and we have built ourselves, effectively, an entire new city. So we have towers just sprawling everywhere here now. And like really, it does kind of look like a city. Almost like one of those like old Soviet kind of wannabe city things where they're just like, oh hey, we'll build a city in this location. And they just put like random towers all over the place. Yeah, that's kind of what this is. Except, of course, this looks a whole lot better. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Look at all of that oil. Beautiful. And probably one of the coolest things, actually, is this oil well right here. So it's in the middle of all these cliffs, and just by luck, it happened to fit perfectly between all of the circling cliffs around it. So it doesn't clip or anything, and it's just built perfectly in the center. So spicy. However, we've kind of had things too good for too long. And I never actually thought about how we'd get all of the oil back to base. Because we need it back there to make the computers for trains. And I guess the obvious answer is we just make a belt highway all the way from the ocean here back to base. But that would look uh, kind of bad. And a train would be so much more efficient. So I restarted some temporary computer production again. So now, hopefully in a little while, we'll have enough to make a pretty decent train system. But while we wait, we have to endure the hideous temporary mess I've created. But it will all be worth it once I can finally tear all of this nonsense out. Until then, we suffer in filth. But I guess then this is the perfect time to look back into... The Void. So the Void was added with the More Factory mod, and it works as you would kind of expect. It destroys things. It sends them into another plane of existence, effectively destroying it. So I think all we have to do is add a little bit of power. The void is active. Looking spicy spicy. And I think we have to hook up a belt to this. So whatever poor item we decide to send in there will be lost forever. So Godspeed, heavy modular frame. May your production in the other world be as grand as it would have been here. And then just boop. Just boop. It's just gone. Lost into the infinite dot. Or whatever. But yeah, this could pretty easily solve our nuclear waste problem. Just send it off into the void. No big deal. Never have to deal with it again. Easy solution. However, there are some really weird things with this game that makes me not want to get rid of the nuclear waste just yet. Number one is the very strange reason why we can't throw it away. Like out of every item in the entire game, from power shards to power slugs to supercomputers, we can throw them in our little trash bin, but not this. So maybe there's another reason why. Like perhaps it has a use in future updates. And now obviously that's just a complete guess and assumption. It could just be that nuclear waste is like a fun problem the developers want us to have to deal with. And it is kind of. And speaking of fun problems, hello there friend. But what I wanted to show here is that there's also some weird future planning type stuff going on as well. Like with Sam Orr. Because although it's not like properly implemented in the game yet, it has an extremely weird and unique mechanic already implemented. Because if you set up a miner to it, and power it, check this weird nonsense out. It starts up, and it starts running for a bit, but then it stops, for no reason. The node is still there, the miner's still powered, and the bin has plenty of room, but it just stopped. And the only way to make it restart is by reloading your game. So if we just quickly save and exit, and then after reloading here, you can see that the machine activates again. So why this is the case, no one knows. But clearly, there's some planning going on ahead, brother. 
So maybe this applies to nuclear waste as well? It's all a mystery, whoa! And also, I'd be lying if I didn't enjoy having the nuclear waste around. It's a fun little problem to have- Oh my god! Whoa. Whoa. It was- It was a fun little problem to have. I didn't think I'd die that quickly. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. It's a sometimes fun problem to have. Other times it can be kind of spooky. Anyway, uh, since it is clearly quite dangerous already, let's quickly transfer it to somewhere else. Uh, doggos? Protect me. <laughs> Protect me from this problem that you have caused. Grab half a stack. Oh yes! Oh yes! The big brain strats! Aha! Easily done. And then we transfer it to ye old buggerino. Okay. Goodness gracious, you dogs! You've done this to me! Okay, quickly though, quickly to the vehicle of truth and justice! And hazardous product has been dumped. Okay. And yeah, a little spooky at times, but it adds a bit more spice to the game. And it gives me an excuse to drive over to our little nuclear waste cave over here. Boom. Be gone, waste. Be gone. And the problem solved. Until the doggos find more. And because I know you guys are gonna ask, we have accumulated 19 nuclear waste in our world so far. All from doggos. But radiation poisoning is but a small price to pay for these cute little guys. Anyway though, back to this. Why is this looking different now? It's still safe to touch. Uh... Huh. Maybe on a game restart, that's why it looks different? Don't know. Anyway, there is another pretty interesting thing we can do with the void thing here. Aside from get rid of nuclear waste. In fact, the power to void items is the most overpowered thing that could possibly be added to this game. Because with it, we would never have to belt items like this ever again. And you know, I think it's easier if I just show you what I mean. So now we're off in our creative world where I'll show you the true power of the void. Because honestly, it's pretty dang OP if used correctly. Mainly because it works so well with the overflow method and with a long forgotten item as well. So first off, let's make a bunch of manufacturers and assemblers. And then who here remembers programmable splitters and smart splitters? Oh yeah, been a hot minute since we ever used them. I think episode 15 of our first Let's Play? Yeah. Well in this scenario, they are the strongest item in the game. Because with those and the void item, we can build a system like this and effectively break the game. Because all we will need to do, for pretty much the entire world, is have one belt running into every single machine producing every item in the game. And I simply call this the Whirlpool method, where you have all the items you need going through one main belt lane, and then using smart splitters to split everything up into machines that need the items. So like you have the manufacturers over here producing whatever, like computers, they need circuit boards, cables, plastic, etc. The smart splitters split everything to where they need to go. You can even have machines on the other side producing more stuff. And you continue this one conveyor belt all the way down the line. And then all the remaining inputs, along with all the outputs, just go back and feed back into the whirlpool, and away they go again, to be used in other machines. Like the circuit boards over here. They'll go all the way around the system, and then over to here probably, where they'll make a couple computers. However, it's not possible in the vanilla game because there is one fundamental flaw when you get everything running. So you connect the belt, everything goes to where things need to be, eventually. But then of course everything backs up, the system jams, and everything breaks. And guys, let me tell you, I've tried to make this system work in vanilla many, 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 many times in the last Let's Play, and you can get it close, but eventually something will build up and break the whole thing. However, the void is kind of the secret to everything here. Because so long as the whirlpool keeps flowing and items keep moving, we're good. 
And we lose an absurd amount of items, of course. But the system keeps moving. And so long as it keeps moving, it keeps grooving. And eventually, machines will get what they need and the system will come to life. And then using the smart splitters and the storage buffer, everything gets resorted and re-enters the system. And then when one machine doesn't have anywhere to output, all of the rubber nail will continue down the line to some other machine that needs it. And now obviously, this is horrifically wasteful. But then again, you have to consider that all of the nodes are infinite. So you technically have infinite items anyway. So it's not much of a big deal to waste a few. Especially when you can build something like this and just win the game automatically. Because this is just a small section, right? Like we can continue this all the way down in some big straight line, just one belt, connected to every kind of machine in the game, to produce one of everything in the game, and that's GG. Like we could have our smelters on here, we can have our constructors on here, manufacturers, everything! Literally attached to one belt. But of course, like I said, it's extremely wasteful and horrifically inefficient, because you have to wait for so much to back up, but it works! and I think this would be the fastest way to automate everything in the game. All thanks to the power of the void. However though, we're not gonna be using a system like this in our world. I just kinda wanna show it off as a bit of a thought experiment. And also, I don't really think we're gonna use the void much at all in our world, unless we maybe use it as a decoration at some point. But until then, we'll leave it be. Anyway though, I think that's gonna be all for today then, because I have to AFK in the main world to let computers be produced. And next time, we'll finally get our train station online. But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoyed, remember to leave a like, and I hope to see you in the next video. And of course, have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs>